So this question is looking at um, differential equations in the context of a specific application. So we're told that the rate of growth of a mosquito population is proportional to the population P present at any given time T. So the first step that we need to do is write this as a first order ordinary differential equation, ODE, um, that describes the relationship between population and time. So what I should be able to do here is we're told that the rate of growth of this population is proportional to the population. So rate of growth, I could write as dp dt, because this is going to be the change in population with respect to oop, the change in time. Now we know it's directly proportional to the population. So how I can write that is I'm going to say it's equal to k times p. So p is the population, and k here is just going to be a constant. So I'll mark that in. And technically, it's like a constant of proportionality. So what that means is that the rate of growth is not directly equal to the population. It gets factored by some amount, which is what that k constant is. All right, It's just keeping it all proportional, but obviously if it was 1, then that would be directly equal, but it's not going to be. It's just factored down, I guess, by some amount, or potentially factored up by some amount. Now, in the context of this question, um, since we're talking about growth rates, um, then you could think of this k as like the constant of proportionality for um, population growth. All right, so I think that um, finishes off in part A. And the only other thing I'll mention is that we've left this as positive, all right, kp. If it was talking about the rate of decay on your population, then you'd make this negative because the rate is going downwards. Okay, so just be aware of that um, trick. All right, so moving on to part b, we're looking at finding the general solution to the differential equation. So looking at this, um, it's first order. So the two main methods that we have to solve a first order differential equation uh, is using either the separation technique or the integrating factor technique. So looking at this, I think you can probably um, have a go at either of them, but I'm going to go with the separation one because um, I think that's going to be quite quick to do um, since we don't have many things appearing in this equation. So for the separation technique, what we want to get is all the p's on one side of the equation and all the t's um, on the other side. So how I might achieve that is if I move this p onto the left-hand side, I'm going to need to divide by it, so it would end up being 1 on p. I'm going to leave this dp here, and I'm going to multiply the dt up to the other side, so I'm going to get kdt. So we can see now I've got p's on one side of the equation, t's on the other, so what we should be able to do is just integrate both sides. So the integral of 1 on p with respect to p, that's just going to end up being the natural log of p. And on the left hand, sorry, the right hand side here, the integral of k with respect to t is just going to end up being kt. Now we've just performed um, indefinite integrals, which means we're going to have uh, those little constant c's falling out. So I'm going to choose to put it on the left, um, but equally you could put um, the plus c on the right. It would achieve the same um, end result. Um, and just remember, you could have a little plus c on the left as well falling out of this um, integral, but really all that's going to happen is the plus c from this side and the plus c from the other side are going to combine into one constant at some point, which is why I've just marked one in here. All right, so now all that's left is rearranging the equation to get p on its own. So how I can do that is at the moment the p is tied up in a natural log. So if I go e to the power of natural log of p, um, the e and the natural log end up cancelling each other out. So all that you're left with is what was up inside the bracket here. Now in order to keep the left hand, si left hand side and right hand sides equal, if I've done e to the power of the left here, I need to do e um, to the power of what's on the right as well. Now one little trick is that since we have a base here and we have two things added in its power, we are able to separate these out. All right? This is like if you had a to the power of b minus a to the power of c, you could write this combined as um, b plus c in the power. So if we just do this in the reverse, we're going to get that. And remember e is just a number, it's like 2.71 something something, lots of decimals on the end. 
and c is just a constant as well. So we could write it as in terms of these two constants, or alternatively, we could introduce a new constant, which just kind of combines them together. So I'm going to get a on its own then. All right, and that's just putting this together. So I could write this more neatly as a e to the k t. All right, and p is out the front. So that would be my general solution to the equation, remembering that a and k are just constants, which I'm not quite able to determine unless I have um, some conditions. So this would be my answer to this one here. I'll highlight this one as well for part A. All right, so part C, um, what we're asked to do now is solve for the specific solution. So that's going to be figuring out the constants that are in the equation. And in order to help us do that, we're given some conditions. So we're told that P of 0 is equal to 15,000. And we're also told that the population can double every 100 days. So we should be able to write this as two um, conditions. All right, so the first condition I'll mark is 1, and that was like an initial condition because it was telling us at time is equal to 0, our population here is equal to 15,000. All right, so a second condition we have is it's telling us that the population is able to double every 100 days. So if we just use this information here, all right, at t equals 0, we've got 15,000. So if we take this out to 100 days later, we would expect this population to have doubled. So we'd end up with 30,000. Okay, so these are the two conditions that we just need to substitute into this equation in order to figure out A and K. So two, two equations, um, two unknowns, we should be able to do this uh, simultaneously. So if I start by substituting in the first one, all right, P is becoming 15,000. A, we're not sure, that's one of the constants we need. We've got e to the k, which we don't know, again, that's a constant we need, but t is going to zero. So essentially this simplifies to e to the power of zero, and we know that anything to the power of zero just becomes one, okay? So that means that we can rearrange this for a on its own, it's just gonna become a is equal to 15,000. So now we should be able to use our second condition, uh, in order to find the second constant, which is k. So substituting this information up here, so p is going to be th uh, 30,000. a, all right, we've just solved for that, we, so we can pop it in, 15,000. e to the k, again, we don't know that, but t we do know is 100. So the only unknown we have here is k, so we should be able to rearrange for it. If we do 30,000 divided by 15,000, that's going to leave us with 2. And we have a k up inside the um, power here. So in order to get it out, what I can do is log um, this side of the equation. All right, And to keep it equal, I need to log the other side as well. So natural log of 2. And now I can use the rule to kind of simplify this where if I have the log of a to the power of b, I can rewrite this as b log a. Okay, so just the power ends up coming down the front. So in our case, it's going to be 100k comes out the front, natural log of e, left-hand side is still the same. And we've ended up with the natural log of e. And these end up cancelling each other out to be equal to 1. So if we just want k then on its own, we need to bring the 100 across. So it's going to become the natural log of 2 divided by 100. And if you type that into a calculator, it becomes 0 0.00693. And since this is the constant of proportionality for the growth rate, uh, it does have units. And it's going to be whatever the um, time unit was, which was in this case days, um, inversed. Okay, just so that it keeps the units um, balanced on both sides of the equation. All right, because if we jump back up here, we can see that we have P, which is the population in um, mosquitoes, per time, which is in days. And on the right hand side, we've got this constant of proportionality, k, which I've just said is going to be the, in the units of days inverse, which we could write as 1 on days. And it gets multiplied by 
P, which is mosquitoes. So you can see that these end up being the same unit, mosquitoes um, per days. All right, so that was a bit of a side note because all that we really need now in the end is our equation which describes um, the population over time. So we just need to go back and substitute into this equation the A and the K that we figured out. So we're going to get P is equal to the 15,000 E to the K, which is 0 0.00693 multiplied by time. So this is our final answer to the question. So that's all there is in terms of this video, and I'll see you in another one.